Okay, with this underside of the VTOL, I'll just explain how I've assembled and put the wiring together. I've got the motor and it goes through to the speed controller here. The wires go through under here and come out to go into the fuselage. I cut access holes and just tape them up once I've finished because you have to connect the, uh, the plugs together, the 3.5 millimeter plugs. So under here I've got a receiver, I've got a voltage monitor, here I've got uh, two UBEC 5 volt supplies. And uh, these are those quick release clips that I mentioned for the wing. They just, I'll just show you, they, they pull up and the wing has a small piece of wood that goes under and it has a hole in it. And this little wire clip just clips on. So that's pretty simple. Now over onto the open construction which I haven't finished. This gives you a bit of an idea of how things go without everything in the way so you can see it a bit clearer. There's the motor. I had to make up these tiny little solid metal engine brackets and basically all they do, focus that thing, is they basically have to pivot here which is roughly about Roughly about there, where the hole in the back of my Sunny Sky motors are. I've got these holes here. There's a slight screw which does go into that area a little bit. So you really just need to have roughly equal spacing. These servo arms are roughly the same space on each one. You have to work that out. Depends on your servo if you get enough travel out, travel from the servo, because the servo has to go basically a little bit more than 90 degrees from there to there. So the speed controller comes through the. I'll just take the wing off so you can get a better idea. So inside the wing. I do the connections, the wires come through, they go through some holes inside the uh, rib, wing rib, there's the two BECs, I'll usually put a receiver somewhere here at the front, it's up to you where you do it, you can put it back there or even right in the back here but a little bit hard to get to, you need to cut a access hole. And that wouldn't be a, that would be a good idea, a good protective place, but you have to run longer wires. Generally I just run wires from here up to the flight controller. Now these engine mounts, the motor mounts, they are just basically 5mm pieces of balsa glued together with an 8mm carbon fibre tube. I have sewing that together with some strong like dental floss or any strong nylon tape then just put some black epoxy over it so that makes that very rigid very strong so you get no vibration and wobble with the uh, two motors with their with their variation and speed um, I think I explained this on the last one but that's basically where the the rear motor screws onto that that's just balsa wood with a bit of ply speed controller and oh, I'll go on to the wiring diagram here to show how it's all done if you can focus that you could take a snapshot of that I'll bring it in onto each area this this is the flight controller it's a KK2 and it has to be programmed and all of the program here. I might do that on another video because that gets very complicated. But this is basically the wiring diagram. Your receiver connects into the pins, the input pin section on four. I've got a voltage monitor which goes to the receiver. From the LiPo battery, the positive and negative come up and feed one of the UBECs. One UBEC supplies the positive power for the input pins and this is a built-in circuit wire on the flight controller it is already connected to output one output one and from two to eight that is not connected so if you want to power any of these it has to be on a separate UBEC 
So on output one, I have got a motor, the left motor. On output, focus that. Output two, I've got the right motor. Output three, I've got the tilt, the left tilt servo. The right tilt servo, the left aileron servo, the right aileron servo, the elevator servo, and the aft motor, the rear motor. So that's your outputs from one to eight. And that's how it's all wired. If you can, if I can focus, you could snapshot that, it might help you. There's the layout. There's some information on what I use, what motors and speed controller. You want metal gears if you can get them, especially for your tilt servo. I'll briefly show you this, it might be of some help. All of these numbers vary depending on the model, but some of it is consistent. Generally, I should do a spreadsheet on this. Generally, most of these settings are similar for most aircraft, excluding whether you've got a Futaba or a, a JR or something different. But most of that is set, set the same. And this is, these are good starting points for all your settings for the flight profiles. Flight profile 1 is for hover. Flight profile 2 is for forward flight. So that's example, your roll P settings would be 100 for hover and these here actually aren't used believe it or not i don't it's up to you if you want to have stability control you have to add extra numbers in here and that gets uh something else that you need to research now down here uh okay the section of section 10 has the output offsets now the output offset number three is for a tilt servo and for output four is for the right tilt servo so that's left and right output seven is just that's basically your center trim on your elevator output eight is the throttle curve for the rear motor so p1 is for hover so it will and as you transition, this curve might be bigger or smaller than what I've drawn there. And when you get to P2 in forward flight, the motor is zero is off. I'll try and get that in. It's that. I've got two different samples here. This is... Uh, this is more relevant, this one here, but they're very similar. Whether it's a high wing or a low wing, I, I find you really only have to play more with these uh, settings for the position for the tilt servo and for the power curve on the rear motor. They're pretty much the most critical. If these other settings are very similar here, you won't have much problem. Your inbound and outbound I recommend three servos, uh, three seconds is all you really need. That's about all I can elaborate now unless someone requests a more in-depth information on all the settings. Okay.